guys, good Thursday afternoon and welcome to the I Love Seville show. My name is Jerry Miller. We are live from our studio in Market Street in historic Charlottesville, Virginia. The Macklin Building, boys and girls. We're live in Charlottesville, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. A fantastic show lined up for you. We will talk about UVA canceling graduation and the impact of final ceremonies being no more in 2021, the impact that will have in Charlottesville, the impact it will have on the UVA corner, the impact it will have on hotels, on restaurants, on Barracks Road, on the downtown mall. UVA and graduation not happening. We'll talk about that to lead the show. Alamo Drafthouse Corporate has filed for bankruptcy. Immediately after I positioned and published on the I Love Seville Network that Alamo Drafthouse um, corporate was filing for Chapter 11. The owners of the franchise in Virginia immediately contacted me. I'm going to relay the conversation from ownership in the Commonwealth. It's interesting. The Alamo Draft House, the one in Fifth Street, and a couple other locations are privately owned, not corporately owned. Because they are privately owned, they are, as of now, insulated and protected from this Chapter 11 bankruptcy at the corporate level. We'll talk about the conversation I had with the Alamo Ownership Group after I published yesterday on this network that corporate was filing for Chapter 11. Best hotels in Virginia and Charlottesville on today's program. US News and World Report put out a, um, a ranking of the best hotels in America. I'm going to focus on Virginia and Charlottesville. I want you to get thinking right now. According to US News and World Report, what is the best hotel in Charlottesville or Albemarle County? Think about that. I have that answer for you in a matter of minutes on the program. Carl Brown running for city council. We broke that news on yesterday's show. We'll play some sound from yesterday's program where, where, where Mr. Brown announced his intentions for council, born and raised in this community. And Brian Pinkston and his, um, his campaign staff sends us a press release and a headshot. Mr. Pinkston getting some quality endorsements. Charlottesville City Council, the race for two open seats, guys, is heating up. Welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's presented and powered by Ting Fiber Internet, crazy fast internet, Ting Fiber Internet. You can save $288 on the best internet in Charlottesville only through ilovesevil.ting.com. Judah Wickhauer is the director. The lead of the show has got to be the cancellation of graduation, Judah. Let's get that on screen. Folks, we, we saw it coming. We didn't expect the cancellation to happen this quickly or this soon in the calendar year. We are following the statistics and the metrics like everybody, and we see cases and hospitalizations going down. We see vaccinations going up. We understand that pharmacies across America, certainly in our backyard here in Charlottesville and across Central Virginia, are getting more and more and more shots to get ready for our arms. Did we expect graduation and final ceremonies to transpire like they have in the past? No. Did we expect Jim Ryan and the University of Virginia and the Board of Visitors to cancel final ceremonies in March? No. I didn't expect to happen this early. I thought it would be more of a wait and see game. Now it's important for us to consider the financial impact and the health impact of not having UVA graduation. First, let's consider the financial impact. I think we all understand that final ceremonies in the three or four days before and the one or two days after are without question the busiest time of year for small and medium-sized businesses in Charlottesville that cater to this demographic and this crowd. The UVA corner, Midtown, the downtown mall, okay? The merchants up and down the city of Charlottesville rely on weekends like graduation and home football games at Scott Stadium to persevere through winter months. And in a traditional calendar year, and 2020 and 2021 have been far from traditional, far from traditional. But in a traditional calendar year, when we do not have a pandemic, it's weekends like graduation it's weekends like those six or seven home football games that determines whether or not a restaurant, a coffee shop, a retailer makes some profit for the year, 
or finishes the calendar year in the red. So while we, are, while we all are saying, you know what, from a health standpoint, maybe it's best that we don't have final ceremonies in Charlottesville, I would like everyone to please consider the financial ramifications and impact that this is going to have on our neighbors. The six or seven home football games, graduation weekend, and reunions in Charlottesville at Scott Stadium are where the Mayas, the Mangiones, the Biltmores, the Virginians, the Sal's, the Citizen Burger Bars, and our friends in hospitality make their money. And to strip it off the Charlottesville calendar is going to have ramifications and impact that we don't know yet. Remember, city council and the leaders of, of this community have said we don't understand yet the impact that COVID's going to have on the budget. With graduation gone, we know that this is going to impact financially how City Hall runs its business. So yes, maybe this is the right health decision, but we don't know the ramifications from a financial standpoint yet. The next topic on today's rundown has got to be Alamo Draft House and the fact that corporate has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I put a link from Variety Magazine on the I Love Seville network yesterday. The network is comprised of every social media platform possible, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, we're airing our content on. So when the I Love Seville network publishes something, immediately people are gonna see and hear it. Five, 10 minutes after I publish that Alamo Draft House Corporate is filing for bankruptcy, ownership, ownership of Alamo Draft House, the Virginia franchise, immediately reaches out to me. And I'm going to relay to you the conversation that I was having with ownership or its representation about Chapter 11 bankruptcy for corporate um, Alamo Draft House. So first, um, I was communicating with, J uh, let me see here, I'm opening it up right now, James Sanford. James Sanford has been from the beginning, almost from the beginning, um, one of the key representation, one of the key representatives of the Alamo Draft House in Fifth Street Station. And this is what he said to me. I'm reading it verbatim for you. Jerry, there has been a lot of confusion, but Charlottesville, Loudoun, Woodbridge, and Winchester, they are all franchises and not corporately owned. I'm going to relay that to you again. The Alamo Draft Houses in Charlottesville, Loudoun, Woodbridge, and Winchester, four Virginia markets, are all franchises and not corporately owned. James Sanford continues. He says, Jerry, we are lucky because we have been back in business since the middle of last August. So we have had office, box office revenue and private rental revenue for more than six months. Many of Alamo's corporate locations like Brooklyn and Los Angeles had to close last March and still have not reopened because of state restrictions. It makes an enormous difference in terms of P&L, as, as I'm sure you can understand. We have seen very encouraging business since Christmas, and the release schedule for new movies is finally looking bright, so we are very positive of the rest of the year. That's from James Sanford, um, who is the creative manager programmer and works in marketing, media, and, and um, film selection for ownership in Alamo with the Virginia franchise. All right, so here's what I want to get out to you guys. Yesterday, we put a link on the I Love Seville network that Alamo Draft House Corporate was filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Within 10 minutes, a representative um, from ownership of the Virginia franchise reached out to me directly. Within 10 minutes, they explain these locations, Loudoun, Woodbridge, Charlottesville, and what was the other one, Judah? 
Loudoun, Woodbridge, Charlottesville, and Winchester are all privately owned franchises and not tied to corporate. So as of now, they're insulated and safe. These are the questions that I would ask anyone if they were sitting in this chair, in this studio, or, or corresponding with me from a, a business standpoint, which is what happened yesterday. The questions I asked were this. Are the four Alamo locations in Virginia capitalized enough to persevere or further withstand COVID-19 and the possibility that the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter of 2021 will have lukewarm sales revenue? I did not get a response on that. As a businessman and as someone who's seeing down the road, and I think it's our responsibility to ask these questions. Why is it our responsibility to ask these questions? Because there's locally owned businesses in Fifth Street Station, like my friend's business, Jamie Schwartz, who owns Picasso Swig, like my friend's business, Kelly Jackson, whose family owns Panera Bread. And their respective businesses do better when Alamo Draft House is functioning at peak performance. So I feel it's our responsibility to ask um, anchor tenants, and Alamo Draft House is an anchor tenant in Charlottesville, in Loudoun, in Woodbridge, and in Winchester. And when you are an anchor tenant, you have responsibilities because other smaller businesses have opened their operation near your bigger business, near your anchor tenant, because of your foot traffic and the potential you have to trickle over traffic to the smaller business. So I feel, as someone who champions small and medium-sized businesses, that I should ask difficult questions of anchor tenants. So this is what I said. A, are you capitalized enough as an ownership group to withstand potentially three more quarters in 2021 of lukewarm consumer confidence? I did not get a response to that. The second question I have, how are the relationships at Alamo's corporate level? The relationships at the corporate level are often where the negotiations happen and then trickle down to the franchisee level. How will the relationships at the corporate level be splintered, fractured, impacted, influenced, or at all um, impacted by this bankruptcy? If corporate is filing for bankruptcy, is there a trickle-down down impact to the franchisees? These are fair questions. I would want to know these questions and these answers if I was had my business somewhat in the realm or ecosystem or associated in a shopping center with an anchor tenant like Alamo. We don't have those answers. When I was asking those questions, frankly, what happened was they didn't want to answer them. And then I was pawned off to a public relations representative. So let's see what happens in cinema over the next three months. Let's see what happens, because I'm going to close this topic by asking you this. Do you have the confidence today, tomorrow, next week, next month, to sit in a movie theater for two hours and watch a movie inside a movie theater? Do you? I'm going to leave it at that. The next topic I want to bring to your, uh, your agenda and into your, uh, into your brain and into your, your ecosystem is um, from the hotel space. And Judah Wickhauer is our fabulous director. Okay. U.S. News and World Report recently ranked the best hotels in America. U.S. News and World Report is the publication that ranks the best colleges in America. And oftentimes, let's talk universities for a second, we are very proud to say UVA is the number one public college in America, number two public college in America. I think UVA is often toe-to-toe -to -toe with what? Michigan and Ann Arbor and UCLA for the, the top public university in the country. We are proud of that distinction. Are we not proud of that distinction? I am, I went to UVA, I am proud of that distinction. Either one, two, or three, somewhere from a public standpoint university, according to U.S. News and World Report. Well, the same publication did a ranking for hotels. And I want to look at that ranking not from an America standpoint. 
I want to look at that ranking from a Virginia and from a Charlottesville standpoint. So before I go anywhere, I'm going to ask you this question. And we have five different states watching the show right now. I see folks all across Central Virginia in Richmond and Northern Virginia watching. Before I give you the answer, I'm going to ask you this. U.S. News and World Report, this publication, what, what hotel was ranked the best in Charlottesville or Albemarle County? What do you think it was? Take a moment to think about it. U.S. News and World Report, what hotel in Charlottesville or Albemarle County was ranked as the best in our backyard? Boar's Head Resort. Boar's Head Resort, number one in our backyard, number 15 in Virginia. Number one in this area, number 15 in Virginia. The Omni Hotel, number 27 in Virginia, number two in our backyard. The Oakhurst Inn on JPA, the Oakhurst Inn on JPA, 37 in Virginia, number two in our backyard. This is US News and World Report. I'll give you those statistics again. The Boar's Head, Number 15 in Virginia, number one in Charlottesville, Albemarle County, according to U.S. News and World Report. Okay? Um, interestingly, the inn at Willow Grove in Orange County, I've been, to, I, I've been to a wedding there. The place is magical. It's charming. It's intimate. It has a little something for every, everybody. The inn at Willow Grove in Orange County was ranked 12 in Virginia. Boar's Head, 15 in Virginia. You have the Omni at 27 in Virginia. And you have the Oakhurst Inn at 37 in Virginia. U.S. News and World Report. Keswick Hall, um, near to open, opening soon. Expect Keswick Hall to start making a ripple and an impact. I would love to get someone from Keswick Hall uh, to talk about their soon-to-open facility. I mean, it's looking absolutely magical over there. Um, two more items out of the notebook, and then we'll get to Alexis in a matter of moments. Um, Judah, why don't we use the, the opportunity of playing the sound from Carl Brown, that 90 seconds or so, as an opportunity for us to set up for Be Conscious Baking Company. That would be great. Um, all right, so I want you to get that Carl Brown sound ready to go. In fact, before we get to the Carl Brown sound, J-Dubs, do you want to get a... Brian Pinkston's recommendation up, and then we'll get Carl Brown sound up, and then we'll get uh, Alexis in the mix. How do you feel about that? Let's go to the Pinkston news first. Get the Pinkston headshot up, and then the endorsement. Very quickly, from Brian Pinkston, who's running for Charlottesville City Council, he has been endorsed by two former Charlottesville City mayors and a former chair of the Charlottesville Democratic Party, former Charlottesville Mayor Elizabeth Bitsy Waters and Tom Vanderveer have joined Dr. Um, Hinton, Ivy Hinton, um, with recommendations and endorsements for Brian Pinkston. We'll see if we can reach out to Mr. Pinkston and get him on the show. One more item out of this notebook. Carl Brown yesterday broke some news and made an announcement that he was running for Charlottesville City Council. Judah Wickhauer, if you can have that sound ready to go from Carl Brown, and I'll, I'll count you in. And then while that's playing, it's about 90 seconds of video, then we can so, get ready. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, all right, Judah Wickhauer, let's cue up Carl Brown. Give me one second here. This gentleman is born and raised in this community. This gentleman is an entrepreneur. He's helped people go from incarceration to back on their feet after rehabilitation, getting jobs in the real world. He's a coach in the community. He's an influencer and a mentor to youth. He's a family man, a product of Norfolk State University. And Carl Brown is someone I know really, really well. I want you to get to know this gentleman, Judah Wickhauer, in three, in two, in one. So, Why is Carl Brown running for council? It's my time. My experience, all that I've been through coming from Charlottesville and just to get to this point, all my experiences with all I've done is just my time. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that I, it, again, the people spoke. Um, the people around me spoke. And, and, and so you, you got to answer the bell. 
it, it gets to a point where you got to answer the bell and stop. You know, it's time to play. So it's game time. And, and so just off of that, I, I know those voices. And so I can make those voices louder without them becoming chaotic where they can construct them and, and, and understand where people will get a good understanding of what we're trying to achieve across the board. Now, we got a lot of work to do. I mean, this is the early phase. Um, and, and, and even after that, we got, we got work to do, but I'm built for that. You know, my experiences um, put me in this position where it's my time. And, and so though a lot of people may not know me, those who do know me will say the same thing. That's why I'm running. My people say, it's your time. You need to do this. Um, and, 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 and so um, though many people run for Charlottesville, nobody has been from Charlottesville born and raised, can give you all the historical proportions of what you want to know and what you don't know. Um, but I was primed for this. Um, so having been mentored by Drew Brown to T. Lewis to the Garvin DeBerry and going through those, they weren't just chance. They prepared me for this. And so this is that time. So it's my time. Running for Charlottesville City Council, we will follow him closely. And remember, um, Kathy Galvin, former Charlottesville City Councilor, has offered to moderate a live debate here amongst all the folks that are running for council on the Democratic ticket. So we'll keep you posted on that. Now let's put all that to side and let's welcome Alexis, Alexis Strouser to the show. She's the owner of Be Conscious Baking Company. Just open in Dairy Market, my wife um, has been asking me... <laughs> You got to get these people on the show. You Thank got to you. get these people on the show. Thank you for having me. So it's absolutely our pleasure. Here we are. Dairy Market is near and dear to our heart because we love Jody and we love Chris. Love Jody. But love before Chris. we get to that, yes. I want to know about you. Yes, my name's Alexis Strasser. Um, my husband and I started our company, Be Conscious Baking Company, about a year ago. Cool. Um, we started selling our produce and pastries in local farmers markets in Charlottesville, and then that's where we met you. Yes, we were reached out by uh, Jenny Stoner, and she asked if we were interested in opening up a brick and mortar, and we were like, yes. So we toured the dairy market last June, signed the lease, and here we are. Yeah. Jenny Stoner um, moves mountains. She's a She's fantastic amazing. Commer commercial broker. Yes. All right. So how do you go? Um, it's truly a success story like the American dream here. You go from <laughs> farmer's market yes. to having um, a brick and mortar here right. in Dairy Market, one of the coolest spots out there. Honestly, in Virginia, if right? not America, yes. Right? I mean, it is <laughs> go Dairy Market. super cool. It's so nice. How and did you get it? How did that? Give us the flip book. Um, so I went to school at the CIA in California. Uh, Patrick and I, when I graduated, we moved back. We bought our farm, and that's okay. when we were like, we want to just start getting our stuff out there. Okay. And then when Jenny said that we had an opportunity at the Dairy Market, Market, we were like, yes, check off the dream board. So um, we were just all for it. We just dove right in, and we've been there about a month now. It's cool. been great. Cool. Um, we're still selling our produce, uh, fresh eggs. We'll have a lot more produce come springtime when everything's harvesting, and um, we're just so excited. Um, yeah. Talk to me about yes. uh, you and Patrick. Yes. Yeah, so How did you guys meet? Um, we've known each other since elementary school. Get out. I'm not even kidding. We live two neighborhoods beside each other. We grew up together. We went to high school together, high school sweethearts. We got married. Really? We have two kids. That is um, awesome. Yeah, so we've known each other, honestly, our whole lives. It's that awesome. is so cool. Cool. Yeah, you don't really find that very often. No, so, yeah. Okay, so I gotta ask you. <laughs> yes. The 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 beautiful Mrs. and I have been together for almost six years. What very is the nice. secret to being together oh, since elementary school? Honestly, did you say kindergarten? Kindergarten. Yeah. Yes. We were best friends first. Okay. I think friends being friends first really helped. Mm -hmm. And then um, we've just known each other so long, like our families and sports and all that. So I don't know. The key is love always. Okay. And, um, I'd say like. Because you're doing two really hard things. Yeah, exactly. You're forever and you're working yeah, together. Yeah, I don't know. It's just being best friends just first and then everything else comes after that. Honestly. Cool. Yeah. What, so what's the dynamic with you and Patrick with the business? Yes. So in the morning, I open shop every morning. I'm there at 6. We open at 8 um, cool. and we're open till 6 on the weekdays. And then okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we do soft pretzels. So nice. we're open till 8 p.m. Um, and so he comes out or he comes to the shop halfway during the day. So we switch out. I go home with the kids. He stays at the shop, closes out, and then we do it all over again. Cool. Yeah. Talk to me about the brand. I mean, the brand is awesome. Bee Conscious Baking Company. So we really wanted to raise awareness for the bees. We have bees on our farm, okay. so we are beekeepers. Okay. Um, being conscious is more of like a verb. So we use um, compostable packaging, organic ingredients. We're all about just getting awareness for the pollinating plants uh -huh. and just the environment, honestly. You yeah. know, we had in, I wish I remember this, and maybe you can um, educate all of us. This is just coming from just <laughs> oh, a, a dumb, dumb guy here. 
the importance of bees. Yes. In they, the, I mean, can you give us a snapshot? Okay. <sighs> I wish Patrick was here to talk to you about this. He could talk your ear off. So I mean, they, they are hugely Honestly, important. they pollinate everything yeah. on our farm, right. and it makes everything that much better, if not, you know, double what you would normally get if you didn't have bees. They're mm -hmm. super important. Um, and then we'll be able to break into our hives this summer and sell our honey, so that'll be definitely in our pastries for sure. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Just honestly, bees, they're pretty easy to take care of. Um, they take care of themselves. You have to feed them in the winter and so mm -hmm. on, but... If you can have them, I highly suggest it. Okay. <laughs> yes. There you go. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So, so how about um, how about opening the business during COVID? That was a challenge. Right? We didn't know what to expect, but we didn't want to wait any longer with the farmers markets. And then um, at Ix Art Park, uh -huh. every every Saturday nine to one, they normally stop like they have a lull, and then Seal decided to push it all year long, and now they're doing it all year long nice. from here on out. So honestly, I think COVID helped the farmers market in a sense. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, you know, during the pandemic, it's, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just more precautions, like uh -huh. just being safe sure. and we're still meeting a lot of people and yeah. getting our name out there. So we're just, we're excited. Whatever hits us, we'll take it. <laughs> Dude, I love your, uh, positive energy and Thank vibes you. here. Like it's like tangible. It's That's awesome. awesome. It's yes. awesome. Um, all right. So how do you go from farmer's market to dairy market? I mean, those are two different. They're totally yeah. different. Okay. And, um, I mean, the. The biggest challenge were the hours, uh -huh. just trying to figure out when people are going to be coming, when uh -huh. it's busy, um, what people want, because we don't necessarily have everything that we have at the shop at the farmer's market. Okay. So it's interesting to see what they want during certain days of the week, during the weekend. It's honestly, it's it's a lot, but we're still feeling it out and getting, you know, getting things worked out, but we're doing pretty well. How about uh, customer favorites so far? Customer favorites. I brought some customer favorites. I can't favorites. wait. Yes. So um, gluten-free and vegan is a huge, huge thing right now, and okay. I am trying my best to offer certain things that are gluten-free. So here, our best sellers in this box are the gluten-free brownie cookie. Oh. Um, we have a red velvet cupcake. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. Dobbs, do you want to take one of these cameras from right here and then put them <laughs> on the food? That would be amazing if you come on set and, and put that camera on there yeah. so we can see them. Yeah, I would love that. So this is a gluten-free brownie cookie, the blueberry scone. I don't know if it's the nostalgia of the blueberry flavor. People uh -huh. love them. And then um, we do cupcakes and cakes. So I brought a red velvet cupcake, the honey clusters. We use honey, obviously, from um, local vendors around Charlottesville. And then our apple galette, which is topped with salted apple caramel. Galette. Yeah. So and I brought some of our fresh eggs that we sell every day at our shop. Do you, you exercise uh, <laughs> two hours every day? The I mean, farm is honestly our exercise. Is it? And our kids. We have yeah. a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so okay. it's constant go, go, go. Dude, we yeah. have uh, a three-year-old on the 20th of March. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so this is yes. how we – okay, so I was describing parenthood uh -huh. as, like, the best, hardest thing ever. The best, hardest thing ever, 100%. And then I ran into <laughs> Kay Rady, who owned Shenanigans. She okay. has since sold it. Yes. And she goes, you know, it's not only the best, hardest thing ever, but it's the longest, shortest thing ever. 100%. Because, like, you can go, like, a week. And my wife, she's stayed home, and she's yeah. the true hero here. <laughs> of okay. course. Her life changed dramatically. Right. My life, I have to work a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But her life is completely different. Yes, so it is. So <laughs> she's the hero. Sweetheart, you hear what I'm saying? Okay. I love you so much. Kudos okay. to you, yes. I'm sorry I didn't make the bed this morning. <laughs> okay. But the best, hardest thing ever, and, like, the longest, shortest thing yeah. ever? Yeah, I mean, you blink your eyes, and they're talking, and, like, you think they're going to start walking, and the next week they do. I mean, that's just a surprise every day it's so much fun yeah yeah do you love being a mom I do and I used to be so Patrick was the farmer so he uh -huh. would have when we lived in California he had um, 25 acres that he himself looked over so I was at home with the kids um, and now it's swip swap. So Patrick's at home. He's the mom. And so I'm just Is like, that you why can you're so it. energized and refreshed? So. I don't know. Okay. I get home and I'm like, hey, babe, how's it going? And you're just like exhausted. So I get it. Kudos to all the stay at home parents. You guys are amazing. Do you remember the thick? Not really. Really? No, yeah. <laughs> no I do. I do. I just, it's getting easier. You That's know, when they start walking, when they start yeah. eating things that you can make, and it's just. It's fun. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> can we highlight your neighbors at Dairy Market? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Where do I start? Best Chicken Wings, Chim Street. Let's see. Angelique, Soul Food, Delicious. Dino's, Best Pizza You'll Ever Have. Such a sweet guy. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Dino's the man. Seriously. Right? The He's so spot? jolly and kind. Yeah, yeah. He brings a lot of people in, and that's just so nice. Um, who else is Best sandwiches, take it away. Uh -huh. I grew up in Williamsburg, so I had cheese shop. I so grew up in Williamsburg. So when I found out that... 
Okay, can we do a segue? Sorry, Patty yeah. Winchester. Yeah. She, do you remember her? Yeah. Yeah. So she was like, "Do you know Jerry Miller?" And I was like, "Um, no. This was a while ago." And she's my dentist. So she was Stop like, "Stop it." I've known him since he was young. That, you have to go and say hi. That is so crazy. Yeah, and here we are. Small world. Patty Winchester was um, our youth group leader right, at Walnut Hills yeah. Baptist Church. Yes. She's. It's not so funny. Oh my gosh. So I had to bring her up. But okay. Um, anyway, sorry. The Milkman's Bar and that the Milkman's Bar is awesome. They do yeah. drinks that not only are alcoholic but non-alcoholic too. Yeah. So both have you ladies, had any? I have tried a non-alcoholic okay. one. Yes, okay. they're nice. all delicious yeah. and they're so much fun to watch. Right. Like wait in line, you know, just like just wait for it. When they're busy, it seems like it's gonna take a little while, but it's so worth it. River the makes that and his team like a show. It's crazy. It's honestly so much fun. And then we have Springhouse Sundries next to us. They uh -huh. sell amazing wines, local cheeses, charcuterie. Um, and then who else do we have coming in? We've got a lot of people coming in. So we've got Little Manila Street, yeah. um, Filipino food. Citizen Burger stand? Citizen Burger, yes. We've yeah. got some tacos coming in. We've got a Japanese place. I mean, it's honestly like what... Else could you Dude, need? Dude, Jenny Stoner and Johnny, Johnny Pritzlove. <laughs> they, oh my gosh. They have got it all. Yeah. They did great. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's do this. So, J Dobbs, we got to make sure we take photos of all this and put it all over I Love Sebo. It looks Thank absolutely you. delicious. Thank you I'm, so much. Really, is it the They're apple galette? They're still warm, yes. Really? I just took them out of the oven. Can I have one? Now? Oh my God, of course. Yeah, please. Oh Salted caramel so sauce on top. Yeah, please let me know how you like it. I will it. save one for a photo. All right, <laughs> where are we going to go with Be Conscious from here? So right now, we are still just the farmer's market at Ix every Saturday, 9 to 1. And at the dairy market, we are open every morning at 8. And Dude, yeah, cut this us is there. so good. Thank you so much. Holy crap. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Oh, my God. Thank you. And did you just get it out of the oven? Come yeah, right literally, here. I just poured the sauce on it. Well, I took it out of the oven, poured the sauce on it, came. How much is that? <laughs> so the galettes are four dollars. Art, I try to price things this really is priced reasonable. So fairly. Thank oh my you. Gosh. I really this try. Is five yeah. bucks all day. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Know you guys got to eat this. This is so good. <laughs> Patrick, you got great apples. Did Patrick grow these apples? No, but we will. Okay. We will have apple trees. Uh, yes. I cannot wait. <laughs> um, be conscious. We will be there to support you guys. You Thank are the you so much. Absolute bomb. We're so excited. Thank Can you. Can we? Will you? Um, how about we both? message patty oh yeah separately. oh please yes and she's gonna be like what i know she'll be so excited to hear from you she's like it's been so long i'm sure he remembers me though so i do i said hi actually she had if, if you say this i will say this yeah. she had a huge impact oh that's amazing she's I'm like, an amazing like woman fourth grade to like yeah uh, still she's, now she's, she's so amazing. i love her yeah. thank you for coming <laughs> thank you for having me yeah, absolutely our pleasure yes um j dubs will uh see you out here awesome. and then we're gonna go to the next one have a great day our pleasure. <laughs> Guys, go to um, Be Conscious Baking Company and Dairy Market. Dairy Market, if you have not been, is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And the variety they have in food there is what really makes it fantastic. And I think once we get back to whatever the normal is, that's going to be the spot. You got people watching, you got cocktails, you got food, you got Star Hill Tap Room, centrally located to everything. I mean, and dude, J Dubs, we're gonna get this photo here and I'll save this other one for you. Do you want this apple galette over here, J Dubs? Yeah, he does. He says yes. All right, I will save this other one. We gotta get a photo of this before we, um, before we get to cracking. A um, couple items I wanna get out of the notebook before we get out of here. And thank you to uh, Alexis Strouser for coming on the show. She was awesome. She was absolutely awesome. Um, ooh, I should have asked her about this. Two more items in the notebook, and then we'll get to your comments here. Two more items, and then we get to your comments on the program. Um, Reese's, did you see that Reese's Peanut Butter Cups is releasing an all peanut butter, or excuse me, yeah, an all peanut butter cup? Some people say this is sacrilegious, okay? I love the combination of the chocolate and peanut butter. The chocolate and peanut butter combination is a fantastic combination. It's one of my favorite combinations. And Reese's is now releasing a new cup. And that new cup, only peanut butter. No chocolate in the cup, only peanut butter in the cup. No chocolate in the cup. Do you have that on screen? The all peanut butter cup? What do you make of the all peanut butter cup, Judah? Is it sacrilege in your book? It's kind of sacrilege, the all peanut butter cup. I just think it's sad. Oh, he thinks it's sad. I think it's sacrilege. I will try the all peanut butter cup, but I like the chocolate with the peanut butter and the peanut butter cup. It's a perfect combination. And then the last thing, and this is just a reflection of 2021 and this COVID landscape we live in, the peanut butter cup is shocking. The next shocking thing is the Washington football team, no more cheerleaders for the Washington football team. 
Remember, the Washington football team got caught up in a scandal with its cheerleaders and photos and mistreatment and, and just not doing the right thing by these ladies that are part of the organization. The, the fallout or the collateral damage of this harassment that's been happening for years is ownership has determined no cheerleaders is the way to go. It's not corporate training. It's not learn how to treat women with respect. It's not don't be a chauvinist. It's not, don't run a business like a locker room, run it the right way you're supposed to do it. It's not getting this old boys club culture out of the executive office. It's none of that. It's none of that. Sensitivity training, no. The answer by ownership was, just cut the cheerleader team. They're done, they're gone, they're hasta luego, they're peace out. Really? That's how we're responding now in the world? That's how you, 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 you solve the problem? is cut the team altogether, as opposed to eradicating the old boys club, chauvinistic, misogynistic locker room that is the executive office or the C-suite of the organization. That's the problem. It's reminiscent of this. You know what is nauseating? Is when people say, when a lady was dressed a certain way and she got what was coming to her. She was wearing that. She got what was coming for her. No, that's not how the world works. She can wear whatever she wants. And if you're the Washington football team, you eradicate or you cut the head off the chauvinistic, misogynistic old boys club in the C-suite. That's how you solve the problem. You don't just say there's no more cheerleaders on the team. All right, that's the close. That's my final take on today's program. It's the I Love Seville show. It's presented by Ting Fiber Internet. Crazy fast internet. We have the best deal at uh, ilovesevil.ting.com. Ilovesevil.ting.com. Get you a free month, the first month free, free installation, $288 savings. Ilovesevil.ting.com. If you want the best internet that we use on the I Love Seville show. John Miller, my cousin, is watching in Virginia Beach. Our friends outside Asheville, North Carolina, are watching the program. I see people in Naples, Florida, watching the show. Outside of Atlanta, watching the program. Outside Martinsville, watching the show. Crozet, Greene County, Fluvanna, Louisa, Waynesboro, Warrington, Woodbridge, and of course, everyone in Charlottesville. Um, comments, Stephanie Rhodes, I agree. Of all the movie theaters in Charlottesville, of every movie theater in Charlottesville, which is the best movie theater? I think the best movie theater in Charlottesville or in Central Virginia is the Alamo Draft House in Fifth Street Station. The reasons I think Alamo is the best are the following. A, they got good films, they show good movies. B, the entire experience of going to Alamo is pleasant. C, the food is damn good. Have you had one of their milkshakes or their pizzas or their nachos? The food at Alamo is really, really good. D, there's not a bad seat in the house at one of those theaters. E, the seats are super comfortable, like that lazy boy type of seating. And the last reason is the surround sound at Alamo, at times almost deafening, but certainly impactful and certainly something you don't have in your living room at home. Alamo for the money is the best cinema experience in Charlottesville for the money. Do you agree or disagree? I think number two is probably Violent Crown with Regal 3. Alamo a clear-cut one. Stephanie Rhodes says, this makes me so happy. Alamo Draft House is our favorite date night spot. Charlottesville needs to get out and support them. Larry Rhodes, I see you watching too. Um, Larry Rhodes, nothing but love for you, homie. Kelly Jackson says, Alamo, put up a big screen outside. Amen. Kelly Jackson, can someone tell Kelly? Kelly Jackson, are you still watching right now? All right, I'm going to text Kelly Jackson right now. Hey. Please watch right now. All right. I'm sending this to you, Kelly. Okay. All right. Kelly Jackson, co-star, Women Changing Our World, Mondays, 10, 15 a.m., I Love Seville Network. Kelly Jackson, family owns the Panera Breads, across Virginia. 
She says, Alamo, put up a big screen outside. Kelly Jackson, you're a genius. Alamo, Fifth Street Station, try to do something different. Alamo, Fifth Street Station, consider putting up a movie screen at the yard. Alamo, Fifth Street Station, the parking lot is empty. How about some outside viewing and some outside movies to drive interest to the plaza and the shopping center so other people in Fifth Street Station can benefit? Alamo, Fifth Street Station, try to do something besides burying your head in the sand and hoping that will have a positive impact. I just don't understand. You have this yard concept in Fifth Street Station that is underutilized. You have Basil that just closed down. Our friends at Extreme Pizza are hanging on for dear life. Chim, Jay Pun's restaurant, one of the best Thai restaurants in Charlottesville, is essentially only, t it is only takeout or curbside at Chim. So here you got Fifth Street Station from a food standpoint. You got Basil who's pieced out. Shut the doors. Hasta luego. Hit the road, Jack. You got Extreme Pizza, who has got weeks left, maybe days, maybe not months, certainly not years. You got Chim, arguably the best Thai food in Charlottesville, arguably Monsoon is there as well. Monsoon is there as well. But you got Chim in a Class A restaurant rental space doing takeout and carryout, literally. Okay? You're paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month for one of the most recognizable restaurant storefronts in Fifth Street Station, and you're not utilizing the dining room. All you're doing out of this Class A restaurant that costs thousands and thousands of dollars a month is doing curbside and takeout and delivery. That can be done at a Class D restaurant office space, certainly not a Class A. I would love to see these mega landlords like Stonefield, private equity company outside of New York owns that one. Barracks Road Shopping Center, Federal Realty owns that one, publicly traded company. Whoever the hell owns Fifth Street Station, I would love to see these landlords that have zero ties to this community choose to roll up their sleeves and offer some rental, rental breaks, some monthly breaks in rent to these small businesses that are struggling to survive. That's not happening right now, and it's unfortunate. Drive-in style would be amazing, a drive-in concept. Can you imagine that? Johnny Ornalis and Kelly Jackson both having the same idea, a drive-in movie theater concept at Alamo Draft House in the parking lot. You have showings at 7.30, at 9.30 at night. You take the parking lot and you build spaces there. You, can't, some kind, you know what the technology could be? Gio, are you paying attention over there? Yeah. Looks like you're not. Just holding you accountable, just like a coach would. That's why I don't like the computer where it's at. Um, You could use your phone for the audio. It could Bluetooth to the movie, and then you could Bluetooth your phone to the speakers of your car. You set up the parking spaces as seats in the movie theater, and then you have people, almost like the waiters, running food to and from Alamo's kitchen, milkshakes and fries and burgers and nachos. And you do that, everyone in the shopping center wins. Everyone wins. Instead, you got a landlord that's not tied to the community that doesn't give a rat's ass about the tenants. Literally, that's what's happening. Doesn't give a rat's ass about the tenants. And they would rather maintain price points as opposed to offering price breaks. Because in their minds, if you maintain price points, if your current tenant roster fails or goes bankrupt or out of business, another new one will come in and the price point ain't changed. Well, guess what? That's not how you do business. That's how you gouge when doing business, but that's not how you build long-term relationships. My tenant roster, I work with our tenants, 27 of them. 
We work alongside them. We just built a suite, which I posted on the network, custom, because our tenant was willing to make a two-year commitment. That's called a landlord that has investment in the tenant's success. Because if the landlord, and I learned this a long time ago, you know what? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get out of here on this note. We have 27 tenants. Do you know how often we have vacancy? Rarely if ever, rarely if ever. You know why I rarely if ever have vacancies? Because I rent my units for 10% below market value and I include perks or amenities like I pay for the electric and I fiber optic optic to this business through this building, my building through Ting. So when the tenants move in, they don't have electric to set up or pay for and the best internet possible is already ready to go with the flip of a switch. That's called providing value. I also furnish my offices for my tenants. So literally, my tenants can come in here, have furniture if they want it, have internet ready to go, electric ready to go, and they just have to start making money. That's called creating a value proposition. It shows a relationship with the tenant that the landlord clearly wants the tenant to succeed. We have to ask ourselves if our out-of-town landlords that are often in the private equity space, if they give a rat's ass about our businesses in this town. That'll catch some heat for Jerry Miller and the Isle of Seville show. <laughs> Watch what happens from that. I don't care. I'm, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I say some things here that may irk some people and, and, and because it's straightforward and to the point and because we're saying stuff that we're saying stuff that people are thinking that they're, unafraid, that they're afraid to say. We say things on this show that people are thinking, but they are, on, they are afraid to say because they could be labeled a name or something. But I don't care. Jody Mills is watching. Alexis is the best. We love her family, and she is like a ray of sunshine. Jody, Alexis is like a ray of sunshine. I felt the sunshine as soon as she walked in. She was so positive. So upbeat and so positive. Um, ooh, Jamie Schwartz. You know my feelings on this. The landlords are pushing small businesses out and changing the face of our community. Jamie Schwartz, I was thinking about you, friend. That, that monologue right there was for you, J Jamie Schwartz. What they're doing is wrong. That is wrong. It's so, and, I'm, and, and I'll sidestep that for now, Jamie, and talk about more general terms here. These big landlords would rather have vacancies in their shopping centers than offer price breaks to their tenants. They le legitimately would rather maintain price points than offer 30, 40, 50% breaks in rent. So they're basically saying, you can leave. I don't want half your money for March or April. Just leave. We'll find a new tenant who'll give us more money and then we're gonna to try to sue you for as much money as possible on this lease. That's why the shops of Stonefield are not local. That's why Sprint and Verizon are in Fifth Street Station and the ABC store and Hair Cuttery and Dick's and Whatever that furniture place is. What is it, Haverty's? Olivia Branch. Keswick was voted years ago number one small mainland resort by Condi Nast. Was the only Forbes five-star property before closing in the region, and it will be again. Olivia Branch, I have no doubt Keswick Hall will be there again. And if I had to bet, and I'm curious of what Andre Xavier th thinks about this, if I had to bet when Keswick Hall is done, when the renovations at Keswick Hall is done, I would bet you, we're talking hotel rankings, I would bet you that Keswick Hall is going to trump the boar's head. That'll catch me some crap right there. Wow. That'll catch me some crap. When the Keswick renovation is done, Borset is right now, according to US News, US News and World Report, the number 15 hotel in Virginia, 
Omni is number 27 in Virginia. Oakhurst Inn is number 37 in Virginia. When Keswick is done, Keswick Hall will challenge number 15 Borset in Virginia for the top ranking in Albor and Seville from a hotel standpoint. Mark that down. Mark that prediction down. Jamie Schwartz, Jamie, you're A plus people. It's sad for the small businesses that make our community great. We don't need another Walmart. We need entrepreneurs that care about customers and care about making our community the best that it can be. Jamie Schwartz, amen. Would you rather have, would you rather have a Picasso swig or a Sprint? I'd rather have a Picasso swig any day of the week. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. Alex Erpy, it's important to remember that the financial impact of no graduation, no graduation isn't just money. People's livelihoods and generational wealth building are a part of that financial impact. Well said, Alex Erpy. Alex Erpy is the co-star of Today e Manana on the I Love Seville Network, Thursdays at 10, 15 a.m., also the CEO of Emergent Financial Services. Um, have, think about this. The UVA students who are fourth years now or were fourth years last year, how crappy was their college experience? We're going to take away UVA basketball last year. We're not going to let you go to any sporting events. We're only going to let you hang out in groups of five or six you can't go to any fraternity parties. You better not go to the bars. Don't drink after midnight. You can't graduate from college. You better freaking take Larry uh, Sabato's class from your dorm room and not from uh, Cabell Hall. Ken Elzinga, you can only talk to through Zoom. You cannot talk to Ken Elzinga in an auditorium. Lou Bloomfield, you can't talk to in person. Only on Zoom for Lou Bloomfield. No fourth year fifth. No fraternity parties. No sorority parties. No closing down the bars at Biltmore. No boozing at the Virginian. No closing down the bars at Coupe de Ville's. You can't hang out with those pretty girls. There's only six people in your group. There can't be seven. You can't graduate either. You can't go to basketball games or football games. There's no school spirit. That's what happened to the last two graduating classes at the University of Virginia. Do they deserve money back because their experience was so piss poor? Fair question. Do they deserve money back because their experience was so piss poor? If you don't have the in-person nature of college, there's no point of college. If you don't have the in-person experiences of human connection and going from an awkward 18-year-old who only cared about booze and beautiful babes to a 22-year-old who wasn't quite as awkward, who still only cared about booze and beautiful babes, but those four-year period was critically important to his maturation down the road. If you don't have that four-year in-person human connection, there is no point to college. I would rather learn from the school of hard knocks. College is as much leaving the nest and figuring out who you are in a protected setting as it is textbooks and A, B's, C's and D's. In fact, I would venture to say that it's even more about finding who you are as an adult, going from an awkward teenager to an adult ready to go to life. That is even more important than what you learn in an auditorium in college. All right, that's the show. I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm back here tomorrow, Friday at 10.15 with Real Talk. At, I think Quentin Beckham is in the seat. Keith Smith and Jonas Smith out of the country. Back next Tuesday. I think Quentin Beckham's in the seat on Friday tomorrow at 10.15 a.m. And then the I Love Seville show. I love you guys. I love you guys. We're presented in power by Ting Fiber Internet, the best internet in Charlottesville. I love Seville.ting.com. I'll give you that link again. You can save $288 at I love Seville.ting.com. Judah Wickhauer is the man, even though he's checking his stock portfolio during the show, and sometimes I have to hold him a little accountable. Um, thank you very much for joining us on the program.